On May 1st of 2023, Apex Mobile was shut down and it left many players disappointed. And Apex Mobile had some interesting features that a lot of players who played the main game of Apex would actually like to see carry over. From their exclusive legends, Rhapsody and Fade, to their free heirlooms which you could unlock by completing challenges. But what I also find interesting is Apex Mobile's replacement, High Energy Heroes, which is a Chinese game produced by Tencent, the same company that worked on Apex Mobile. And now, High Energy Heroes has so many legends which compare to Apex, but also legends with abilities of unreleased legends or scrapped legends that we know were leaked for the main game of Apex. So today we're going to compare the High Energy Heroes with the Apex Legends and see the similarities and differences and some very interesting abilities that we were expecting for the main game. So to start off, I'm going to show you this legend right here. Can you guess who this is? I think this will set a good example of what you can expect from this game, because this is Caustic. That's right, they turned Caustic into this hero called Panna. And you'll see why this is Caustic when we look at her abilities. Her passive Mark Frost means that any enemies taking damage from Panna's abilities are inflicted with Mark Frost for 5 seconds, meaning that they're highlighted to Panna and her teammates. And her tactical, the Frost Trap, is a Frost Trap that's thrown and attached to walls or surfaces, triggered by the proximity of enemies and creates a cold fog that when an enemy is inside it will damage and slow them for three seconds. And of course, because of her passive, they'll be highlighted. And her ultimate is a frost grenade which spreads ice across an area which also causes the same slow and damage effect. So this is just a reskin version of Caustic where instead of having green gas, it's just frosty ice. And here's their take on Bangalore. This right here is Hella, the high energy heroes version of Bangalore, whose passive street instincts will give you 30% speed boost for two seconds if you are shot while sprinting. The tactical blue smoke has two charges and lets you deploy a smoke grenade. Just like Bangalore, however, they made it so much better because her passive will activate when you touch the smoke. So imagine Bangalore where while she's inside smoke, she gets her double time activated. So not only can you be inside the smoke and have the cover of the smoke, but you also have increased movement speed. And the ultimate, Furious Explosion, will allow you to throw a grenade that emits seismic waves forward that cause ground explosions. So it's basically Bangalore's ultimate, however it can be used indoors because no missiles drop from the ground, instead it just creates seismic explosions from the ground. This character right here is called Cleo, or as we know, Loba. Her passive increases the range of her automatic pickup, because in high energy heroes you can basically pick up items automatically as you run over them, you know, specific items items that you need or better attachments for your gun, it will automatically grab them for you, so this is just a buff to that. But her tactical allows her to transform into a civet and fly in the air, and you can adjust the direction while in the air. So it's Loba's bracelet, but instead of it having a static trajectory once you throw it, you can just control it mid-air and fully spin around and change direction and juke your enemies. Sounds a lot better than the Loba we currently have. And the ultimate is basically Loba's ultimate, but they've made this ability even better because it will allow teammates to teleport to the dimensional store if they wish to, which is basically Alter's ultimate. They've buffed Loba's ultimate by fusing it with Alter's ultimate and allowing your teammates to remotely teleport to it. I kind of wish we had Cleo in the main game. This right here is Finny, which is their version of Valkyrie, and I don't really have to explain because everything's the same. She has a jetpack, the tactical is just cluster missiles, and the ultimate is the exact same as Valkyrie's ultimate. So we can move swiftly on to Vader. This right here is their version of Crypto, whose passive ability allows them to interact with survey beacons spread around the map, which will scan the next ring location, and it will also scan nearby enemies on the map and show their health bars. So it's basically a fuse of the ring consoles and the survey beacons in one. Now his tactical is the survey drone, which will automatically follow and scan enemies. So unlike ours, Vader's drone will always be by his side scanning enemies, and when there's an enemy nearby, it will just fly straight to that enemy and just start scanning them, which will reveal their location and their health, and you still have the option to manually control the drone, so you can fly it around and do some recon, or scan the survey beacons through the drone. So Vader's drone is levels above Crypto's drone. Imagine if Crypto's drone, you could have just automatically follow you. 
This has been a buff a lot of people have asked for for a long time, but High Energy Heroes has it covered. And Vader's ultimate will create an EMP blast with the drone that damages and slows enemies. However, what's awesome about this is you can remotely choose the EMP's location and the drone will fly to it. So you don't have to set the drone up, you can literally just click your ultimate and point where you want the EMP to go and the drone will fly over there and then emit the EMP. A pretty solid legend and I think if Crypto worked this way in the main game, we'd see a lot more Crypto main. Next up is Rogers, which is Gibraltar, who can take 15% less damage from enemy fire, and his other passive ability is the Gun Shield, exactly the same as Gibraltar. The Tactical is a Dome Shield, which does the same as Gibraltar, and the Ultimate is a Mortar Strike, which does the exact same thing as Gibraltar. Now we can move over to Pathfinder. This friendly little robot right here, Kong Kong has a passive ability where they can access the survey beacons just like Crypto and scan the ring location and nearby enemies. His tactical is the grappling hook, but what's different is you can aim at any location and grapple towards it because the grapple will eject a small drone that it attaches to. Rather than having to grapple to a surface, you can literally grapple into midair and you'll be just fine and you can swing that way. I swear Apex actually might need to take notes. Or would this just be too OP? Okay, it would probably be too OP. And the ultimate is just the ordinary zipline ripped straight from Apex Legends. Next up, we have Mayfair. Now, this is probably the most interesting legend in terms of the fact that they don't directly correlate to one of the legends in game. You'll see what I mean when we talk about the abilities, but just the vibe of this character seems like they were based on Rhapsody. They love music. Their things are kind of themed around music. And that's exactly how Rhapsody was in Apex Mobile. But the passive allows them to slowly recover armor after leaving the battlefield, which is Watson's passive. So you would think, okay, maybe this is Watson in High Energy Heroes, but the tactical, well, it allows you to enter an invisible force field and recharge your shields. What is this? Basically, mid-battle, you can just pop your tactical and you'll just sort of stand there in this invincible thing and regenerate your shields and then pop back out of it and go straight back into the fight. A very strange ability and it's nothing like anything we've seen in Apex. But then the ultimate will do this. It will deploy a circular force field that all characters within it will take no damage. It makes you invincible while inside this thing. However, the force field can be destroyed if you shoot the drone in the center of it but this actually reminds me of Uplink's ultimate. Uplink is an unreleased legend in Apex that the developers were working on and their ultimate was an invulnerability beacon where you could put this thing down and if you were inside it then you couldn't get knocked. So it seems like high energy heroes have used that unreleased legend ability and used it in their own game. So it gives you a small taste of what Uplink could have been like. Here we have what you'd suspect to be Seer, but this is actually more of a Revenant style character. I know, they've kind of mixed and matched things at this point, but the passive ability of this character called Chauncey means that when they hit an enemy, they can see them through walls for a short period, which is similar to Revenant's passive ability, but also the exact same as Mad Maggie's passive. Basically, you shoot an enemy, they're highlighted for a couple of seconds after. Now, the tactical allows you to throw a quantum ball, which when you hit an enemy will slow them down briefly and then leave a trail of footsteps so you can hunt them. So they're a little bit like Revenant's old silence in the way that you throw them. However, instead, what will happen is once an enemy is hit by it, you can basically just stalk them and follow them because they'll leave behind footprints and I'm pretty sure they get highlighted through walls as well. So if an enemy is hit by this, you can basically just track them down and you'll have such an advantage in the fight. And then the ultimate allows you to select an enemy then absorb some of their health so that they have a little bit less health and you get a little bit more, and then you pull them into the judgment field for a duel. This is a special realm where no other enemies matter, it's just you versus them, and inside the judgment field, enemies can't use their abilities, which again gives you the advantage, and once you win the duel, some of your armor will be replenished. Now those of you may recognize this ability as one that the devs were testing for Revenant Reborn. Back when Revenant Reborn was being worked on, he did have an ability where he could pull someone into the shadow realm for a 1v1 duel. It was called the shadow chamber and again it looks like high energy heroes have seen this unreleased ability and decided to implement it into their own game. But I think it's cool because it lets us see what this ability would be like. Next up is Angela which is basically lifeline. She can use her drone to revive her teammates just like lifeline can. She can open up the extra blue bin compartments to get attachments or consumables and her tactical allows her to release her 
Doc drone to heal her teammates, but it also has a shield. That's right, they've taken her revive shield that she used to have and put it on her tactical so you can heal your teammates and have the shield at the same time. Now we know we're getting a lifeline rework soon. Do you think this would have been a cool ability that people would have enjoyed? I don't know, seems very OP. And the ultimate is a care package just like lifeline has already. This character is called Sharp Shadow and you probably guessed it, it's Wraith and they have the exact same abilities as Wraith. Her passive will give her a mysterious warning if someone aims at her. Her tactical is her phase and the ultimate is her portal. No difference there, literally the exact same character and she even looks very similar. This character is called Nightfall and it's basically Bloodhound. The passive allows them to scan the survey beacons and their other passive displays enhanced footprint icons near the crosshair so you can locate enemies better. So basically if enemies are moving and running near you then the footprint icon will pop up so you may not have necessarily heard it but you'll know exactly which direction they're in. The tactical is a scan just like Bloodhound and the ultimate is just like Bloodhound's ult. You take reduced damage during the ultimate. The ultimate gives you faster tactical recharge and faster movement speed along with the fact that if you kill an enemy it will increase the ultimate duration and will slightly heal your armor. So pretty similar to Bloodhound and finally we have Rayman which is Octane and this guy right here is a solid recreation of Octane. The passive allows him to auto heal, the tactical is the stim and the ultimate is a jump pad which also grants you a double jump. It seems like the jump pad has a lot less gravity. Once you hit it, you go a lot higher and your double jump also sends you a lot higher rather than just being a slight boost in momentum. And that wraps up the legends in high energy heroes. I think the most interesting ones are the ones with unreleased apex abilities, but it's very funny to see the spin on the legends that high energy heroes gives them and the fact that a lot of the buffs that they give them are pretty desirable and would be really nice in the main game. Like Loba allowing her teammates to teleport to her ultimate. That would be an insane perk that maybe one day we could get in the main game. Let me know your thoughts and there is a new legend coming to high energy heroes soon that was leaked so I wonder which legend this could be. There's no way of guessing just by looking at them because the fact that this character is caustic completely baffles me. Anyway let me know your thoughts and which character was your favorite.